Hey everybody, it's Jamie. Hi, I'm Gemma. From Play to Learn Preschool. I apologize if you caught us a second ago. This is actually our second. Oh, and Facebook just said congratulations. This is our 100 <laughs> Facebook wow. live video. Hundred. That's crazy. Hey, thanks Facebook. Um, I apologize if you caught us a second ago. We were all set up, ready to go. And then as soon as we pushed live, live, and we had the light on behind us, and it, it was, was like ghosts. <laughs> we were like bright white lights. It was kind of scary. It was totally crazy. So we deleted it, and here we go again. Happy Valentine's Day. We had our dads in this morning and some grandpas yeah. for a dads and donuts party. So our kids were sugared up and ready to go by about 9.30 this morning. Well, they came in excited. They came in they excited. So denying that. They, and we sugared yeah. them up. They were, they were good. Oh, no. <laughs> because we kept, then kept them the rest of the day and they were excited. But I think they were excited because dad came. We had a fun day. Yeah, I hope did. you did too. And we thought, um, you know, at the beginning of the school year in um, October, we tried doing a Facebook Live tour of our entire classroom. It's not very successful. It was just tricky to um, move the camera and get it set up and the lighting and everything so that you could see all of the different areas of our room. So Jen and I were just trying to brainstorm kind of how we can share some of the different things that work for us. Maybe you'll be able to pick up some ideas that'll work for you, um, but not in such a big, I don't know, like an all in company. Yeah. So you don't have to watch an hour video just to get tips for certain <laughs> things in the room. So we decided to break it down and we'll try to do these um, once a week or so, um, where we just give you a full out tour of one of our learning centers. So we thought today we would, yeah, we would start with the art easel. Maybe we should get up at the end of the day. That's Janet's so smart. smart. See, that's what we, I mean, we usually do like for birthdays and we usually things do. like, well, I mean, we don't <laughs> usually sugar them up, but you know, when we have a special thing, but today we had the dads in. Yeah, so we have them come in first so they can go to work. In case because they have to go, yeah. you know, to work. So we have None of them like, seem really that, like, they really want to rush out the door to go to work, though. They're like, oh, we should stay and play preschool. <laughs> I know. The end of the day makes more sense. But we always just have the dads in when they first arrive in case they do have to go on with their day. So we agree with you. End of the day would be better. <laughs> uh, the kids were good, though. Yeah, they we were had a really good day. Okay, so we are going to give you a tour of our art center. We actually have three different opportunities for art in our classroom every day. We've mentioned, um, I think we did a video, it must have been in the fall, about how we turn like art projects into, mm -hmm. like, process art projects into fridge-worthy art. Yeah. We might need to do another one of those sometime soon. Um, but so we always have some kind of a thematic or some kind of a little bit more teacher-directed art project uh, set up over at our snack table area. And, um, that's most of the time we'll have a yeah. cooking activity or yeah. you know some kind of a little not exactly a craft but something that we've set up for them um, but the area behind us is always available to our students it's a two-sided piece of furniture the one that you can see over my shoulder is what we call this like sit and create or the creation station um, area where they can work on art projects of their own choosing and then on the back of it is our painting easel. And so we thought that you might just enjoy or you might have questions for us or um, suggestions even uh, about how we manage this, the creation station and the art easel area. Did I get all that? Yeah. Sorry, I didn't give you much chance to talk. <laughs> it's so good. What else would you like to add, Ms. No, Emma? it's fine. I don't think so. I don't think I have anything. One of these days I'm just gonna... No, because remember how that went? She left me and I was like, um, you were fine. See? Mm -hmm. You'd be fine without me. Okay, so right behind us is the creation station. I'm going to flip the camera around um, and just kind of give you a tour of some of the things that we have available to our students. I will tell you that um, at the very beginning of the year, like in September and even October, um, these shelves are pretty much empty. Uh, mm -hmm. There's some paper yeah. and crayons. We introduce it slowly because... How much trouble could they get into with paper and crayons, really? Right. You don't want to add scissors to the first day of school. <laughs> or paint. No. Play-doh. Nope. Tape. Probably not. Paper clips. Well, maybe. No. No. <laughs> so this area behind us is pretty much empty at the beginning of the year in September. And then we introduce one uh, medium, you know, if it's watercolors or Play-doh or scissors, we introduce one sort of at a time, maybe like once a week or so. Yeah, when they're proficient with it, when they know how to deal with the 
the either the water comes get it out, do then, it, and clean it up. Then we're happy to add something new. And then as soon as they've mastered it, like they know how to do watercolors and play doh and scissors now, then we have that out available for them anytime. So let me flip it around so you can see the art easel behind us. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments and we will try to answer them for you. All right, here goes. I think now we can turn the light on. So we had the light on and that's what it was doing, the weird camera thing. Oh. Does it do weird? No, it's weird. Yeah, it's too bright. Then you look like you're dark. I don't know. Okay, well, we'll do okay. that one. So there's a little light down there so they can see what they're doing. But this is our creation station. And Gemma, do you want to kind of Very just... far away. I don't know how much you can see, like which part you want me to start with. You can start with the paper. That's okay, fine. so our paper, obviously, is organized by color. It's just construction paper. Rainbow order. Of course it is. <laughs> um, it took us a few years to figure out this was a really good way to do it. Just because they can keep... It's easy for them to pull down and they know where it goes back if they haven't used it. Yep. And then underneath those shelves, we have some different art things that they're free to use. So we have uh, watercolors in here. And like I said, we teach them in September how to get the water out and a paper towel and how to clean it up when they're done. So they're, they're free to come over and get some paper and get the watercolors out whenever they want. We also have um, crayons, that just baskets of crayons. Should be, we should label those better. They we put, were labeled. They were, someday. They got pulled off, I think. We should probably also label the colors. Yeah. yeah. Our labeling leaves a little something to be desired over here, I guess. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Um, and then the other great basket just has our Play-Doh tools. And a lot of times we'll have a big bucket of Play-Doh over here. It's not over here right now, but... We need um, to make new Play-Doh. We need new Play-Doh. Play it only lasts for so long that you have to make some. Yeah. And then underneath, um, again, they can just kind of sit here and create. So we have different... Um, yeah, pencils. Because you always need pencils. Always need pencils. There's scissors. And scissors and paper clips. Paper and clips tape. and tape. And really, you don't want to put this out at the beginning of the school year. It does not look like this in September. No. <laughs> and then we have this um, thing of masking tape so they can create with um, masking tape. It's a really good idea. You know, you just pull it off like whatever color you want. But... It's not sticky. It's not sticky tape. <laughs> what do we call it in England if it's tape that's not sticky? <laughs> <laughs> Jamie makes fun of me all the time because I say, she says, uh, I Where'd you put tape, the stick? Like, do you mean sticky tape? Or she's like, well, what other kind of tape is there? That kind, right sticky. there, that kind that's not sticky. Well, then I don't know what we would call it. It's just Rainbow tape. tape. Doesn't stick very well. It feels right off. It's supposed to stick, I think. But <laughs> I felt like we were misled with the... Um, yeah, it's not especially sticky. Yeah. Um, so the question is, do the younger ones follow the same schedule of new art items? Nope, they're a little bit delayed. So we don't teach scissors for them until like November. Yeah, and sometimes later, depending on how the kids you actually have. You have to gauge that on what your kids are like. But I probably wouldn't just leave a big basket of scissors out for a while <laughs> Yeah. with three-year-olds. It depends on your class. So... Um, if, yeah, just depends on the class. No, they're a little bit delayed. And that's why we have our students come Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday all together. And then on Wednesday afternoons, we can put some things away mm -hmm. for our Thursday, Friday group. Yeah. So, okay. Here's our little guinea pig. Somebody made him a Valentine's card. I mean, how sweet is that? <laughs> all right. And then the other side is our art easel, the painting area. And we, ch we typically have paint out. Sometimes at the beginning of the year, we just put markers and... Crayons. Crayons or dot markers. All right, and then here's some tips we have for the, um, I think so. I'm wondering if I can set it up so we can, eh, okay, yeah, we're ready. It's just me then. It's just you. I was trying to think okay, if I could set it up. so as you can see, our, our easel is very well loved. <laughs> We've had this since the beginning. It's probably, it's got a lot of paint on it. <laughs> what? Every once in a while we think, we should try to we clean off. We should scrape that off. And then we're thinking, like, no, no it's not, not worth out. our we time. The, it's just been really well loved. We should have put a shower curtain. If you've got a brand new one, you should yeah. put a shower curtain underneath yeah, it. Yeah, it's like encrusted on here. <laughs> so um, we stack the paper up. So when the child has painted on their, their first picture, they can just pull it down themselves. And they have a new piece of paper ready to go. Yes. And so then we just... Um, because the problem was that we would, you know, take the paper down to hang it up either here or then we have, you know, like art hooks with their names on them, you know, around the room. And when we, oh, sorry, <laughs> I'm panning. Before, before, we, before we could put another piece of paper on, 
they've painted the easel. That's why it's That's like why it looks like that. Which is why it took us a few years. Look, it's still sticky on here. It's, it took us a few years to figure out that this made much more sense. Yep. That's why we do that. And it really does help. It's really good. It does. The um, We don't always have hearts on there, but today we put out uh, pink, red, purple, and white paints, yeah. of course, for Valentine's Day. And then a couple of them asked, can you help me draw a heart? So, um, Jamie says that baby wipes take off the paint really easily. Um, it, it's too late. It's 12 years too late for it's, that, I'm afraid. There's probably like one little piece up here that's still white. It's, that we can yeah. But apart from that... If you have a new one. Yeah. If you yeah. have a brand new one, you should cover it. Yep. Um, this is what we did with the wall. Jamie was smart and put a shower curtain up, and that's been really helpful. I got tired of wiping yeah, the paint off my wall all the yeah, time. It's impossible. We still get paint on the wall, but this is, it means you can just take it down and get a new one if you really want to. This is a real do-it-yourself thing. So we've got um, just yarn with um, clothespins and uh thumbtacks yeah. just as a drying rack um those big drying racks seem so expensive so we've never purchased one yeah i don't um, know where we put one either. i don't know the one thing that saves our sanity is inside the paint cups rather than just filling the paint cups with paint um which of course we did at the very beginning before we got yeah. smart and um, then it didn't i don't know why we didn't think of this before so we always put a plastic sandwich bag inside our paint cups before we fill it with paint and you just you can do the ziploc ones or the foldable ones these ones uh the i've got paint on me now just little sandwich bags the sandwich easy. bags but you just fold over the top they have saved us many <sighs> saved me many times washing up there because right. it takes forever to get the paint off yeah so at the end of the week we'll just <laughs> um take the paint bags out and toss them yeah. um to refill it up so that's um that's really easy. We also always have a Sharpie. Is it hiding up there? Oh, it is. Yep. So I always have a Sharpie up there so that we can write their names or if they dictate anything to us, there's always a Sharpie hiding up there. Okay. And then the art smocks is another um, kind of a hack that we have. So we used to have a problem with them not being able to hang their smocks up on the hooks. And you know, they were always all over the floor. Yeah. So we just added these binder, binder rings to yeah, the rings, sorry, I can't um, it. it's just to the you can clip it through the arm or yep. the sleeve or whatever so when they're done they just hang it back up there and then and that's our bathroom but on the other side of that door we have our art um Apron. doing, aprons i couldn't come up with the word no no so smock okay so a couple of the questions that people had um somebody said that they put contact paper over the art easel that's a really good idea again we feel like we missed it by about a decade. But if you have a new art easel, you should be smart. Do what we say, not what we do. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then some other people were asking um, how the students reach the paper up there. It's not a perfect solution because it's high. I'm really short. <laughs> so our taller yeah. students can actually reach it or they'll pull the box down, get it out and put it back yeah. up. Um, and our shorter students. They, they figure out a way. <laughs> Some of them stand gonna, on the chair and reach How are you going to solve your problem? And they either go and get a friend who's taller, which has been the story of my life. I was going to always saying, Jamie, hey, Jamie, you I can't reach this, reach this, this down for me. And so same with my husband. I'm like, I can't reach that. Um, they'll go and find a taller friend or they pull a chair pull up. Pull a chair up and just grab and, it. Or they'll yeah. ask us. Yeah. Um, we're all about solving problems around here. Uh, and then somebody's asking, like, how do we manage the art at the table? They do come and go. So they're free to sit there um, and make whatever they're gonna make. If it's something that is dry right away, then they can just take it home. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes they think that it's um, really something special. So they ask us to hang it up or to put it in their portfolios. Um, we do not limit their paper use. Oh, do you know what we didn't show was the scrap box. Oh, oh. it's a box of scrap paper. On the other side of the <laughs> smart <Alec. laughs> on the other side of the easel, underneath where the paint is, I didn't show that. Um, but we have some extra paper down there, and then a big, just a box of scrap paper. Yeah. And so they're free to use that, and we actually encourage them to use so that first. If anyone knows anything about me, if they've learned anything about me, is I really like to recycle things and reuse things. So if they're cutting a the table here and they cut something out and they have a big piece of paper I'm like you shouldn't throw that away that's just wasteful you should put it in the 
basket so that someone else can use it or you can use it another day and they I'm happy when they do that. I'm all there the is more cycling. storage on the other side. We should probably We'll show you. We'll show you that. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so we do not limit their art usage. Um, if they have paper that's, like she said, that's not been cut up, then we just put it in the scrap mm -hmm. box and we ask them to try to use that paper first, find something they could use in there. I, they love going through they that do. because there's all sorts of goodies in there. And sometimes their most creative projects come from that scrap mm -hmm. box, you know, not from the brand new sheets of paper. So how do we store the art when it's done? We try, it's not perf a perfect system, but we try each kid to have one thing on display on their art hook around our room and as long as it's something dry we just take it and send it home after that mm -hmm. and just swap it out uh, sometimes we have some really prolific artists sometimes and there's so much paint on them that you think it's never gonna dry so we actually have to lay them out we usually lay it on top of the construction lay it down somewhere we have find a, a surface somewhere and lay it down at least for a couple of hours till some of the drips are we're just like you we just make do with what we've got you know yeah <laughs> just make it work um, somebody asked do we limit the number of children in the center and the answer is no we really believe and this is true of all of our centers you'll hear me say it over and over again that the students need to negotiate the space and the supplies amongst themselves that we do not say two kids here four kids there um, that given the setup that we have so you know the art is on the other side there's four pieces of paper and four hooks mm. um, so we want them to be able to Negotiate, negotiate, and solve that problem. So if they're the fifth man or the fifth kid who comes they're up, they're smock on and they say, "There's no space for me." We say, "How are you going to solve do? that problem? <laughs> How are you going to fix this? <laughs> that is a problem. What are you going to do about that?" <laughs> um, if you didn't watch my video from yesterday, that's kind of what I talked about. And so they'll just, you know, say to the kid in front of them, "Can you tell me when you're done?" Or um, behind us, we have two chairs here, and two kids comfortably fit in this area. If the third kid comes up. Sometimes they pull up another chair mm -hmm. um, and squeeze in. Sometimes they'll move it to another place in the or room. Sometimes they just stand in the middle. Just stand there. Sometimes they come to us and say, uh, there's no space for me at the art center. Uh, and then we say, what are you gonna do to solve your problem? <laughs> Not very nice with that, but we do. It's not rude. It in a really I just mean way. like I see that you're Let's right. Get some ideas. How are you going to fix? There it? is not space for you. That is true. What we are you going to do to we solve have that a problem? Small table, which is kind of next to that. That sometimes it's over, it spills over into that. They can fine. move over there if they want. Take it to another place, and so they'll say, "I'm going to take it over to the snack tables," and I'll say, "That's fine. Great. Good. Good thinking. That's a good way to solve your problem." So it's really important for us to um, let them do that. I agree that if you've got a bigger class of 24 kids in a smaller space mm -hmm. that you might need to put in some more parameters for safety, but to the extent possible, it's really important that those kids learn to, to negotiate space and supplies and problem solve amongst themselves. You'd be I really agree. surprised at how well they do with working it out and figuring out how they're going to get their friend to come do it with them too. Even if you brainstorm with them like, okay, let's figure out the, the best way to do the art center. How many kids do you think fit over here? Um, and they can say, oh, there's two chairs, so probably two. Um, but then, you know, when there is a conflict or a problem regarding the number of kids, um, to really let them problem solve um, is, I don't know, it's a really, it's a really important learning moment in the class each day. So. Anyway, um, do you want me to give you a little peek at the bottom of the art easel? I guess I didn't really show sure. it. I'll just flip it over. Um, I'll just wait here. Okay. <laughs> She'll just wait here while I go. So here at the bottom of our art easel, I didn't really show you that part. But this is where we store. So that's like our scrap box. And then we have some different trays that just fit under there. And our paint cups. We also have got some extra paper under here. Just our extra easel paper, scrap paper. What is that? The big paper. The big paper, the newsprint paper, um, just that's all the, kinds of, the that's the scrap box. <laughs> all this good stuff. Yeah. That's yeah. a lot of good paper there's in the scrap some, box. There's, there's card stuff, there's white paper, there's, there's all sorts of paper. All kinds and of good stuff. sometimes, I, I'll clean this out every now and again, and I have found, um, past students have like written their name Aww. on it and they're like a third grade now or second grade I'm like oh, oh we'll hang it up on the wall oh look there's a scrap paper from so-and-so from 2009 <laughs> <laughs> anyway so we do have more storage underneath there this is a really nice piece of furniture it's super heavy so we'd never move it so I hate to think like what's hiding behind there or <laughs> um, what we're gonna find where I don't know if we ever move it if we ever get new carpet or if when we retire so those are our tips and tricks 
for maintaining sanity at the Art Easel and also for encouraging creativity amongst our students. She's a tall grocery bag and they put recycling items in here. Oh, that's a good idea. We don't have like a recycling scrap box like where they could create like 3D stuff all the time. That's good. That's a good idea. Thank you. <laughs> anyway, those are our tips and tricks for the Art Center. We'll try to do another one like at the light table or the um, math manipulatives and kind of just over the next course of the next couple of weeks let you see um, more in depth about each center. So that's it. Let me know if you have any questions. We'll try to hop back on. Okay, it's February and we're doing a month of kindness. We're challenging everyone in the world to be kind, show love, and then you can win a prize. So all you have to do um, to enter our month of kindness giveaways each day is a random act of kindness. Let us know what it is on the raffle copter. And then on Wednesday, that's tomorrow. Tomorrow, we will draw winners for all the giveaways from last week. Okay, do you want to hold this one? Sure. This is all right. Today's giveaway. It's today. just a little something. It's totally Target backwards. Goodies. I couldn't. Target didn't sell them both ways. <laughs> just a little Target goodie. This one says, "Today is a good day." It's this cute little art easel. Since we're doing the art center, um, and this one says, "There are no limits to your dreams." It's just a little motivational thing. So we've got two winners this week and a little pack of motivational stickers reward stickers believe in your dreams don't, don't give, give up. up love work. what you do work hard dream big so we have a little target dollar spot goodie prize for you today we'd love to give this to you send you a little something to make your uh teach from the heart teachers inspire <laughs> so just a little motivational something to add a little ray of sunshine to your desk <laughs> and your day we really you can also have this space you can put chocolate in it for yourself <laughs> chocolate i totally thought you were gonna say chalk because it's like a little chalk. You could put chalk, but that's not Gemma would eat. never do that. You could put chocolate in that. Jen, you remember our video way yeah, back when? Put some little bars of chocolate. That'll make it a good day. That's what I mean. Wish is for racial message, and you can give yourself a little You know, she's going to put some in the package when I mail it, right? It'll be like, taste oh, yeah. a good day, and there'll be some like little British chocolates in there or something. Unless we're sending it to England, then you know you're No Maltesers for you. You can return them with Maltesers for us. <laughs> Anyway, um, these are our little goodies for today. We would love to send them to you and just uh, say thank you for watching our Facebook videos. Thank you for putting up with us. Thank you. We enjoy spending the afternoons with you, and we hope you have a great day. Have fun playing and learning with your kids, everybody. Happy Valentine's Day. See you tomorrow.